Jesus bought me, and he made me a priest and king, and to keep my feet from falling, and that is why I sing. I can get right up, show mum how it would go up. I used to be allergic to fur. I couldn't grip at all with my fingers, couldn't even grip a pencil. I felt all of the pain completely leave me from head to foot. Jesus is going to take it away. Never have it again. I was totally deaf in my right ear. Come on! Absolutely marvellous. Threw it to pieces. I can be a vet now, which I've wanted to be for a long time. But it was a marvellous sensation. Now open. Just relax. God does it. God opens blind eyes. What can you see now? You can see me. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's, for our scripture reading, which I think is very nice to precede a sermon, let's read some of These aren't the scriptures I'm preaching from, but, uh, but uh, it's lovely to read. They, 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 they portray the idea that we're going to be talking about. Ephesians chapter 2, let's read from verse 4 to 10. Shall we read it in concert? I think that's nice. Verses 4 to 10 of chapter 2. For, but God, together everybody, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wow, I just get so turned on when I read that, I want to stop and shout at every verse. So, such revelation Paul walked in. He walked in the same revelation that we walk in and that you are walking in. By the end of this week, you'll say, I've got it. Hallelujah, I've got it. Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? And let's go over and read verse 20 and 21 and 22. Let's read it in concert again. I like that. And read it with gusto. Hallelujah. <laughs> or we should say with spirit. I guess that'd be nicer. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay. Say, that's me. that's me. A habitation of God. Habitation. You're looking at it. Point and say, you're looking at it. <laughs> me. me. You believe in God, big deal. He believes in you. That's the important thing. Willing to come and live in you, set up his headquarters at your house, his embassy. You run things. People can get to you, they can get to heaven. Did you hear what I said? You're the embassy. You give visas to your country, your country. And this is a foreign country. They can get to you. They can get to heaven. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We're talking the Christ 
connection. That all fits in, don't it? You connect at the embassy. <clears throat> the Jesus life, the ministry life. The Jesus ministry. Question for today, what makes Christianity more than a religion? <clears throat> we try to help you rethink the Jesus life and the words, until the day he was taken up into heaven. The second letter, I, stands for our subject today, our inspiration from his example. Yesterday we looked at his example as our model, understanding that he is the only one we are to follow because he is the one in whom God lived, the first person since Adam and Eve had to leave the garden, the first person in whom God lived, Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin, divine blood line, not human blood line, <clears throat> Savior of the world. The miracle life of Jesus. Without miracles, Christianity is a ritual. The Christ connection links the history of God visiting our world in one believer, Jesus. It links that with the reality of God visiting our world through all believers. That went over your head. Otherwise, you'd have said hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh. God came in one person. Now the same God, in the same way, has come in you. When that is revelation to us, reality to us, we truly become aware of our mission in life. And our life becomes a mission, and it becomes a happy mission, full of love and tenderness and kindness and concern for people. We become God's interpreters in our world. John Lake called us his associates. Oral calls us his partners. I think a nice term, we're his interpreters. He lives in us. The world, the, God will never descend in your community in a cloud, wearing nice, effeminate, beautiful, flimsy clothes with a halo on his head and reveal himself in your community. No, it won't happen that way. The best image that anybody in your community will have of Jesus is when they see you. They won't get any better. You're the best God has in your community. Be that. Practice remembering that. You are his representative. You are his reflection. That's what Christianity is. That's why we were called at Antioch first, Christians. Christ people. Because in the early church, the early believers, Christ was their model. Jesus was their leader, their teacher. He was the one they followed 
and imitated. They remembered that he said, follow me and you can do like I do. You understand? God visited our world in one believer and showed us how it's to be. And now he visits the world in all believers. He comes, he lives in our world in all believers. Now I'm saying that, I'm going to be saying it some more. I'm coming with some more ideas along the same line in order for this to become revelation to you. It's got to be quickened by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is at work right now as much as he can be. Brother Van Essen, I'm glad you're here. I just got your letter and from all your kids. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful to see you. Just come, stand up. Just come from Australia, building a new church in England to be a headquarters and an outreach, a continental outreach with his heart set on on, on the continent as well as England. He's smart. I know him. He's smart. He loves God. He's tough. He's an Aussie. Look out world, the Aussies are coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's good. Glad you're here. God bless you, brother. Get acquainted with him. He's wonderful. Where was I? Let's see. Your brilliant face has stopped me right in my tracks. God visiting our world in our generation, living in our world in our generation. He's not far from you. <clears throat> he lives in you. We're talking about the continuation of the Jesus ministry through us. The manifestation of God in Christ's flesh becomes the realization of Christ in our flesh. Did you miss that? You got it? You got it again? The manifestation of God in Christ's flesh becomes the realization of Christ in my flesh. Don't forget that. Are you holy folks? You... This week, you can't just sit and listen. This is light. This is truth. Embrace it. You're going to worry and say, oh my God, how can I do that? I'm not that holy. I, I can go to church. I can take communion and the preacher preach good for me. I get to heaven. I hope he'll let me in. No, 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 no. You're better than that. Grow up. You're better than that. You may be gray-headed, but grow up into Christ. You're better than that. God is believing in you and sent me over here to talk to you. And I'm not a nobody. I could be anywhere I wanted to be in almost any country of the world preaching to 100,000 people if I wanted to. If, but I'd rather be here with you if God has led me to do this than preaching to 100,000 people in Africa or India or somewhere else. Because I'm only... I'm only here for God's purpose. But I am here for His purpose. And I am a spokesperson in His name. I have been a long way and learned a lot. And I don't mean to be braggy about it. I want to share it. That's why I'm here. Not to sit here like a cock robin and say I'm the only smart one in town. I've been so far and you're nobody. No, no. I'm here to tell you, you can do everything I can do. I never had a feeling. I never had a sensation. I never had a word of prophecy. I never had nobody to lay hands on me. I never had nothing that you guys have all got. Just an Oklahoma farmer that took that and went with it. And I'd rather have that than hands laid on me or a word of prophecy. In today's time, people carry their little words of prophecy around their pocket. They don't carry their Bible, and they get that out, or their little tape recorder, and they get it out and hear what someone... Come on, grow up! Amen! Get over the kid stuff. You kids, I don't mean put you down. You kids are great. I'm talking to these old folks. They got to be smarter. <laughs> You kids all say amen. 
Come on, help me out here. Say amen, you kids. Everybody under, under 12, say amen. A little louder. Come on. Come on, once more. I got one. Good for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good for that. God, through Christ in Bible days, becomes Christ through the believers in our days. Don't miss that. That's not fancy, new, fresh words from a preacher, oh boy. No, forget it. It's truth. It applies to you. It belongs in you. You're here. What in the world are you here for? You think you just came. No, you didn't. You were attracted by the Holy Spirit. God created a divine rendezvous between him and you and me. And we're not nobodies. We're all important. Are you with me? God, through Christ in Bible days, becomes Christ through the believer in our days. God sent Jesus then in every chapter of John except two, I think. Jesus says, I was sent of God. Do you say that? I've already told you, God sent me here. I'm here in his name. I'm his servant. Whether I preach to a handful of people or whether I preach to a hundred thousand or a quarter of a million, that's not my concern. My concern is to be God's spokesperson and to be honest and to be enthused and to be happy and to represent him and to give good news. That's what I'm for. Hallelujah. So I'm low in the volume of the book. It is written of T.L. Osborne. Behold, I come to do thy will, O God. You can say that. That's not holy stuff beyond your reach. No. You say that. Hard to not get diverted. Good stuff. There's 24 chapters written by Luke about the Word become flesh in one person. 24 chapters. There's 28 chapters written by Luke about the Word become flesh in all believers. Well, Jesus said you do greater things than me, so we got 28 chapters. His life just got 24, so we're a little better. <laughs> That's beside the point. Yeah. Today we look at the second principle. What makes the Christian faith more than a religion? We look at the words, as I said, until the day he was taken up into heaven. The second letter of the word miracle, I, for our inspiration from his example. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ is my inspiration for life and ministry. Is it yours? Yes. His three years, three and a half years, impacts our lives. He showed us what we can be. That's what he did. John 14, 12 says, Whosoever believeth in me, the works that I do shall they do also, and even greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. We're living in that day. Jesus couldn't have spoken to a quarter million people. I have many times. I have electronics. I have loudspeakers. See, Jesus couldn't have crossed the Atlantic to come over here and talk to you folks. I do. 
It just took me a little while. Like getting in the car and crossing to another state in America. And here I am on the other side of the world almost, you know. <clears throat> Here's what I believe. I believe Mark chapter 1, verse 14 I think that might be one of the most wonderful, if not the most wonderful, resumes, succinct expression that, that condenses the Jesus purpose and ministry in one verse. Did you ever notice it? Verse 14 and 15. 15 is the real climax of it. Jesus, but 14, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now that's what he came preaching. What do you preach? I wish they wouldn't have used the word kingdom because folks have been fighting about it ever since. Theologians have been fighting about it ever since. And uh, even the old church fathers, they, they never got over that. And when Constantine got converted, then they made him emperor and head of the church because he was sure going to be it, you know. The kingdom had come, you know. They, they, they've always interpreted that word kingdom politically. You know, the disciples, two of them, they wanted to be sure that when the kingdom came, one of them could sit on one side and one the other of Jesus on his throne. They're going to make a king. That, that word king. When I get to heaven, I'd like to ask God, what in the world did you use that word for? I could have given you a lot of words that had been better than that. <laughs> but I probably won't ask him, and he probably wouldn't, wouldn't answer me. <laughs> you know, I might say it's none of my business. But anyway, I just don't know why in the world he used a word that is so easy to get tangled up on. But we have to use it because it's in the Bible. What in the world does it mean? I like Idahosa's statement about the best of any I ever heard. He says there's five statements that will explain the kingdom of God. Number one, God created this world. Number two, God has a right to... God owns this world. Number three, God has a right to rule this world. Number four, God wills to rule this world through people like you and me. Number five, that is his kingdom on earth. I think that's about as good an expression as, as we could ever have. God, kingdom, God, God, kingdom, reign, rule, domain, territory. That's what I am. I'm that. God in me reigns. That's why the devil hits the first exit, because I'm in charge when I come. He reigns. When I get there, the kingdom of God gets there. How about you? Did you ever think of your nice little self as coming in, the kingdom of God being in you? Well, it's in the Bible. Accept it. Begin practicing thinking that way. See, that's too holy for some of you. That's too, that's too big. That, that's too far out. You're thinking, come on, I don't want to get way out like that. I, I'm, a, I'm just a human. Well, you can be if you want to, but God wants you to be like him. See, let, you say, yes, Jesus can live in me, but he'll be quiet and nice. Okay, that's nice. He'll be that way. He'll be just as nice as you let him be, just as little as you let him be, as you keep him. He'll, he'll, he'll conform to whatever you allow him to be. He will never violate your will. But as you learn truth, he can expand and grow in you, and you can be more useful and, 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 and happier and live with greater assurance and greater confidence, and uh, when, you, when you minister to people, you can know that God is talking through you. And as you practice the awareness of that, 
you'll grow in his grace to the full stature of the measure of Christ in you. That's what he wants you to do. Don't limit yourself. Don't say it's too good for me. It's all right for the bishop and for the preachers and all those important folks and, and for T.L., you know, he's, he's, he's known all over the world. Okay, it's all right. For, no, no, don't feel that way. I'm just a lady. I'm just, in, I'm just a nobody. Don't say that. Quit that. Stop that. Say, I'll stop that. I'll stop that. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good. Stop that because it's, 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 it's destructive to your spirit. Let Jesus be all that he wants to be in you. Amen. Allow him to and learn. Well, I know, I know you're wanting to do that or good heavens, you wouldn't have got up early enough to be here to hear me at 10 o'clock. That's a good mark on you. There must be nobody here that thinks you're a nobody or you wouldn't have got up and come to this meeting. Here you are. Hallelujah. God says, thank you for coming because I got good things for you. I believe in you. I love you. He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. How did he do it? What was his sermon? Mark lays it out. The Holy Spirit moved on it just in a few words. And this was his message, saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Believe the gospel. That does it. The time is fulfilled. The old system has worn out. The priests have killed it. They've turned it into a ritual. There's no respect left for it. It served its purpose. It's finished. It's time for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Amen. Do you ever think about that statement like this? This he came to fulfill the scriptures. You ever think about it? He came to put the old system to rest. To close the book. Significantly, that's what he did after he read Isaiah. It says he closed the book. I'm not thinking of that, trying to over-spiritualize it. But the scriptures, he came to fulfill the scriptures the scripture, what were the scriptures? They were only Old Testament documents. That's what the scriptures were. We think of the scriptures as all of the New Testament. No, no, it, just, just the Old Testament documents. The prophets, the minor and major, the Psalms, and the books of Moses. Those constituted the scriptures. He came to fulfill them. Meaning, he came to end, fulfill. That means it's over, it's done. See, we think he came and now, watch him, he's going to make it all come to No, 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 no. He came to fulfill, to, to put it to rest. Let it be. It's over. Your religion is finished. You can have me now. Amen. You don't need animals anymore. You can have me. He fulfilled that. It was a metaphor. It was an illustration. It was a schoolmaster. Now it was blood and flesh. He fulfilled all that other stuff. Now you got the real thing that they've been talking about all the time. And the guy that announced it was John the Baptist that got the revelation. Who raved for the Baptist? <laughs> yeah. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of what? That would include Gentiles. Heathen. 
The dirty people, the unclean people, the nobody, the people that even it took Peter several years to catch on to after Jesus rose from the dead, but I'll get into that later. <laughs> My goodness. But he, he, are you hearing me? This is real stuff. <clears throat> the time is fulfilled. Okay? S settled. Now, the kingdom of God is at hand. Meaning, not, 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 not present yet, but right at the door. Why did he say that? The kingdom of God is at hand. Here's what he meant. See, remembering the kingdom of God is Jesus alive in us, reigning through us. See, he's king. All things are put under his feet. He's Lord. He is master. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Let all the people know that God has made this same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and the anointed one, Christ. You understand? The kingdom is at, the kingdom is at hand. We're right. Jesus knew his ministry wouldn't last long. And then he would change roles. First he came, he set an example for us. Well, I can't go into it. I don't have time. That clock's running so fast. I got so much I want to tell you. He came first, and he had to discover himself. Now that... I, See, it takes time to deal with that because folks get all hung up. They think he was born knowing everything. No, 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 no. He learned exactly like we learn. He learned from the scriptures like we learned from the scriptures. And it was from the scriptures that he knew himself. Then, see, that brings up another subject. I got to read something to show you, you know. Stop that clock if you can. <laughs> see, did you ever read this? over in uh, Luke 24. You better write this down. I'll probably mention it later in other studies because it's so important. But in case you're not back here, let me say this. Know yourself in the Scriptures. Women, know yourself in the Scriptures. I wish these women's conventions would start inviting me to preach. I'm the best woman's preacher in the world. Simple, because I lived with the best woman preacher in the world for 53 years. Hallelujah. See. But they won't ever invite me. They want a man. I mean, they want a woman. <laughs> they need me. Where was I? I'm, I'm, I quit preaching and went to meddling. <clears throat> Jesus going to the road to Emmaus with the two disciples that were discouraged and talking all their woes. You know that story, don't you? If I was over in Russia, I'd have to explain it. But over here, you know about it. Is that right? We know so much. Let's grow up and live it. Amen. Say, we're coming. Amen. Say, we're coming. Amen. Say, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. And so Jesus said, fellas, you shouldn't be so discouraged. So let me tell you some good things. Said, you're real slow to catch on. And there's so much written and you haven't read it and you don't believe it. Why don't you wake up and, and beginning, verse 27, chapter 24. Mark this, put, put something big all around this verse and take it home and pray over it and say, Oh God, let me be like that. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Do you know yourself in the Bible? Look here. Look here. When the devil comes around, say, hey, devil. And he's accusing you. Say, hey, look here. This is me. Hmm? Say, hey, come here. I want to show you another one. Look over here. I'm trying to save my place, but I'll let it go. Look, look here. See that? Hey, devil, look. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. And the devil looks worried. Hey, I got some more. Do you know yourself in the Bible? 
Hey, kids, can you point? Hey, devil, look here. Hey, that's me right there, right there. Read that, devil. Hey, I got some more. Don't run off. Don't run off. Hey, here's some more. Hey, hey see? See there? Hey, see that? Hey, devil. Hey, devil. 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 Hey, hey. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, yeah, yeah. F.F. F. Bosworth told me when I was 25 and he was 75, said when the devil comes around, you do all the talking. He'll never hang around if you do the talking. <laughs> you ever hear people come and say, the devil said to me this, this. what did you listen for? You wasn't doing the talking or you wouldn't have heard him. You do the talking. Amen. Then make it scripture talk. Where was I? Back here, Mark 1, 15. The time is fulfilled. You got that? The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Now, at hand. The kingdom of God means God alive in flesh and blood. Did you ever think about this? There's only one thing I know about that God don't have any of, and he needs it desperately. Did you ever think about that? Kids, did you ever think about that? We think God's got everything. No, he's missing something. And you've got what he needs. But he can't work without it. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not just being cocky. I'm telling you the truth. God needs flesh. Now, we Pentecostals all condemn flesh, but we're wrong. My flesh is not bad. I'm not bad. I know there's a lot. Flesh can be bad. My mind's not bad. We Pentecostals condemn our minds, too. We don't think. We don't read. We stay kind of, some, sometimes kind of dumb. We don't read. We don't expand ourselves. We're afraid if we read something that's not holy, it'll get on us and we'll be evil. Now, come on, grow up. Use your brain. God gave it to you. Use it. Amen. Be a learner. Amen. I've got a big library. I read. I read. I want to know what people have thought. Don't be afraid to learn. God needs flesh. We have it. So his, he says, I'm spirit. But we're all, we're all trying to be spirit. The Pentecostals especially. I'm one of them. So I can talk. We're all trying to be spiritual. Our whole thing is to conduct another seminar or another camp meeting so that we can be more spiritual. And we're just chasing our tail because it won't work. Because God is so good at that, you'll never be as good as him. You'll never be as spiritual as him. He, he's, he's so good at that. He don't need you to be spiritual. He needs you to be flesh. He says, look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you my spirit if you'll give me your flesh and we'll have a Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we can do something. God cannot show himself in spirit. If he came in spirit, everybody would run. Read your Bible. Everybody he got close to, they saw, they fell, or they ran, or they were afraid. Are you hearing me? I'm not trumping on your toes. I'm trying to enlighten you. I'm not silly. I'm not a silly preacher. I'm respected all over the world. Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, everybody comes to my meetings and respects me. I'm not a harebrained. I'm not talking to you, stuff, you folks silly stuff. I'm talking about you, the core that makes this ministry tick. We've got to carry on what Jesus started. We've got to learn some things if we're going to carry on what Jesus started. And one is to realize that God is alive in us like he was alive in Jesus. Amen. That is the kingdom of God. Jesus in a human person reigning. 
I reign. I go to some of these places overseas and all these preachers want to get around me and pray for me and, and all that stuff so that I'll be sure and be protected while I preach. I say, save your prayers. Leave me alone. Let me go preach. I'm not interested in all that stuff. My goodness, for me to get down there and have a prayer meeting so the devil wouldn't hurt, poor devil. I'll never honor him like that. No. No. Don't grow up. Poor devil's defeated. A puff of wind. A smoke screen. No reality to him. Well, I say reality, maybe that stretches a little bit. He's real to unsaved people. He can do anything there. He's powerful there. I'm talking about Christians. No, nothing. A puff of wind. Nothing to it. Would I ever honor him with a prayer that he wouldn't bother me and ignore the revelation of redemption that Christ conquered him and exposed him openly and defeated principalities and powers and went and sat down at the right hand of God and set me down with him. My goodness, would I get down here then and squeak out little prayers that the devil wouldn't bother me? No. Don't ever give the devil that kind of credit. That's why I get so worried about these spiritual warfare people that's running around trying to make so much of the devil. I wish they'd forget the devil and all their devils and focus on Jesus and, and give him to the world and the world would be saved and the devil would lose. I believe that. I believe that. I just have no patience. I've been too far. I've seen too much. I've been where there's real devils. I know all about them and they're all scared of me. I've proven it. See, I am a child of God. I am full of the Holy Ghost. I don't have anything you don't have. I'm dead as a, as a I don't know, as what? As a, as a doorknob. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, all you folks, you get your thrills and you get your sensations. You get flashes in your hands and up your spine. And I never get nothing. I don't get nothing. Never. When I pray for people, I never feel nothing. I wish I did. But I've got this. I believe this. And I walk by faith. Hallelujah. And the poor devil's in trouble. Yes. Hallelujah. He respects that. I'm trying to get this verse 14 because I've got a bunch of other scriptures I want to go to. This verse 15. The kingdom of God is at hand. He's saying pretty soon now, real quick, the kingdom of God is going to be established. Now, what he's really saying is, all the rest of the scriptures prove it. This is a resume, just a few words put together. What he's saying is, pretty soon, he says, see, God said, see, now, now he didn't say this, but these are the facts. He could have said, God is in me because I'm born of the seed of God. Now, he didn't say that because that would have sounded like he's bragging. In fact, they killed him for that, for saying he's the son of God. Said, you make yourself equal with God. Said, you ought to be killed. And they killed him. So, so I'm coming to that point. I'll, I'll make that clear to you in just a little bit if I can get off of this verse 15. <laughs> but, but I'm coming. But look, what he's really saying is God is in me. And you're all looking at me like I'm some wonder. You can be just like me. I told you to follow me and learn of me. And every little, every, every little while, I stop healing the sick and all these other things and preaching, and I teach you, and I, I tell you everything I can. Some of you don't quite catch on to it, but I keep telling you, learn of me. You can be like me. But you think it's so wonderful. You say, oh, teacher, you pray and get answers. That's so awesome. We don't know how to do that. Teach us how. And he taught them. And I wish I had a week to preach over here just on, the, on that disciple's prayer that prayer he taught them. It's all in there. It's absolutely rich. But what he's saying to them is, look, the kingdom of heaven's at hand, is at hand. See, God is in me. You want to be like me? Well, you're going to get to be like me because there's the only thing that separates you from the kind of life that I have with the Father is sin. And that sin has to be dealt with. It can't just be brushed aside. The ransom has to be paid. Humanity has willingly yielded themselves to Satan and become his slaves. And their sins 
have to be punished. The soul of sinners shall die. The wage of sin is death. It's got to happen. Jesus is saying, I can't explain it to you right now, but it's going to happen. The kingdom is at hand, right close. Because after I get through teaching you and showing you how, how, how life can be when God is in you, see, that's what I came for, how life can be when God's in me, then I'm going to change roles and I'm going to become that lamb that John the Baptist announced about, the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. And I'm going, my own life, I'm going to give my own life, lay down my own life, give my own blood as a ransom for you. Now, read your scriptures, all confirms all of this. This all solid. That I'm going to lay down my life as the lamb of God for you. And when I've done that, I will die. They will bury me. He told him that much, and he'd come back. He said, then, then I'll go, and I'll settle with the devil for you. You won't have to. I'll go do it for you. Yeah. And I'll settle with him. My blood will be the testimony that the ransom is paid. I died in your name. He'll have to accept that, and I'm going to take the keys from him. And the Father will lift me to his side, and I'll go with my blood, and it'll be placed on the altar of the holy place in heaven to forever testify for you. It'll always be there testifying for you. And after that, when that sacrifice has been made and that offering has been placed in the holy place of heaven, then God can come in you like he is in me. And you can be just like me. Now that's awesome. Now he said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom is at hand. So, just two things to do. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, now, what does repent mean? Change your mind. Change your attitude. Change your thinking. Reform your knowledge. Now, this is what Stephen got in trouble for preaching. He said he's preaching against Moses' law and telling us that Jesus is going to change the customs of Moses and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> just had a fit. And they killed him for it. But see, see, repent, repent, believe it, repent, 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 change, you, change, 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 change. You won't need Moses' law anymore. It's obsolete. It's laid aside. It's put away. You don't need any more calves, no more goats, no more heifers, no more turtle doves. Are you hearing me? Repent, repent, repent. See, repent. That, that's what that word in, in indicates. Change your whole posture about the Mosaic law. Repent. Come to life in a new way. Change. That gets rid of that. Now, believe the gospel. What's gospel? Good news of what Jesus did for us on the cross as our sacrifice. Good news to the sinner. Jesus bore your sin. Why? So you don't have to. So what? You're saved. Good news to the sick person. What good news? Jesus bore your sickness. Why? So you don't have to. So what? You're healed. Good news to the guilty. What good news? Jesus bore your guilt. Hallelujah. Why? So you don't have to be guilty. So what? You're free. You're not guilty anymore. You're God's friend. Nothing held against you. As the living Bible says, you're left, Paul said in Colossians, you're left standing there in the presence of God with nothing left against you because he's bought you back as his friends. Now, does that verse make sense? Jesus came preaching the gospel, saying, 
And this is a whole thing, preachers. This is the ministry. The time is fulfilled. That handles the Old Testament. The kingdom is at hand. Glory to God. Look out, devil. We're coming. Our sacrifice is coming. Not bulls and goats that could never take away sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to keep my feet on the ground. I get so happy about all this. Into the holy place went the high priest alone once every year. Hebrews 9, verses 7 and 8. On the day of atonement with blood which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people. The Holy Ghost was signifying that the way into the holiest of, all, of, of the presence of God was not yet made manifest. See, the old Mosaic law couldn't open the door. We couldn't find him. Hebrews 9, verse 11 and 12. But Christ, the high priest of good things to come, entered once into the holy place, not by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hallelujah. I can't hardly read it without crying. Hebrews 9, 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which is only an example of the true holy place, but he entered into heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Chapter 9, verse 26. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 10 and 1. The law was only a shadow of good things to come, and it could never, with those sacrifices offered year after year, make the people right with God. But verse 4, because it was not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Hebrews 10, chapter, verse 11. Those Old Testament priests stood daily offering those same sacrifices which could never take away sin. But Hebrews 10 verses 12 to 14, but this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? The old system deteriorated and became an empty ritual distorting the image of God. The Hebrews thought they knew what God was like, but they could only know law and judgment. But Jesus comes, and John says, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And Jesus came preaching the gospel. Good news. Cool, beautiful, <laughs> smiling, healing, touching, lifting, never condemning, never accusing, never with his fist clenched. Jesus, our model. Jesus, our master. Oh, the second letter I. I am so inspired when I look at my Jesus and the life he lived and the way he preached, and the way he taught, and the way he handled problems, that turns me on. I'm an old gentleman, but I'm a happy old gentleman, <laughs> full of God, because I'm seeing somebody before me that challenges me to be my best for God because the same kingdom that was in Jesus is in T.L. Osborne. The same righteousness that was in Jesus is in T.L. Osborne. The same life that was in Jesus is in T.L. Osborne. The same virtue that was in Jesus is in T.L. Osborne. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe it. That's not bragging. That's taking my place. That's repenting of the old uh, uh, carnal thoughts and embracing, believing the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you believe that? Yes. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Oh, I just, I just as well quit. There's so much. I, I, I'm on page 2 of 13. 
That's all. So I'll never make it. It's all just that good. But I can't get to you, but so much. So <laughs> I appreciate the pastor giving me as much time as I could. Hallelujah. Do you, do you, let, let me give you a little outline. You preachers go preach on it. You Bible teachers go teach on it. And you Christians, you go study it. Just, just a few ideas. Just a few. Uh, the inspiration of our identity with Christ. Write that down and study that. I got so many scriptures I could read to you. <laughs> wow. The inspiration of imitating Jesus. Some of you folks, you get run down. Some of you preachers, I wish all the preachers in England were here. I really wanted to help them. I really wanted to help them. That's why I came over here. But hallelujah, we, we can help you that are here. And you're worth it. You're worth it. Hallelujah. You bet. The inspiration of impossibilities. The inspiration of how he saw people. I'm giving my outline. The inspiration of how he saw religious rules. The inspiration of how he forgave sinners. Study the cases. Study it. Preach it. Teach it. You want some messages about Jesus? I'm giving you some. The inspiration of how he healed the sick. The inspiration of what he said about his words. The inspiration of what he said about the world. The inspiration of his great commission. The inspiration of the ripened harvest fields of the world. The inspiration of his words of his person, of his ministry. Some more I words to put with that. Not only inspiration, but identity. The illumination that he gives the impartiality that he practiced. The importance of his mission. The infallibility of his word. The infusion of his spirit. The integrity of his person and his word. The interpretation of God that he gives to us. His invitation to follow him. And so much more. I hope that's enough to just get your brain to working. The word is so rich. The world is so rich. People are so rich. They need us to stir up that wealth in them. We can spark it if we think. And they'll come alive with their own stuff in them. If we can ignite it and spark it and get them to thinking. I am an inspired person. I am crucified, Galatians 2.20, with Christ... Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ. Say this, Christ lives in me. Christ Say, I believe that. I believe and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, so I could have God come and live in me. Romans 6 and 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ... We believe that we shall also live with him. That's right now. That's not in heaven. Some of you folks wait to heaven. My goodness, you won't need to worry about that then. 
You'll be alive, all right, if you get to heaven. But now is where I want to live. The life that Christ lived is now. I'm now carrying on what Jesus began. And you are too. Don't be afraid of it. You can do it. You can do it. Believe. Hallelujah. Colossians 2, 9. For in him, and he's in me, Say, and he's in me. Amen. Dwells all. Did you say that too soon? Dwells all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Bodily. He needs flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. And you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Why worry about the poor devil? Isn't that demeaning to the redemptive work of Jesus to be running around getting in hotel rooms trying to pull devils down? I mean, that's really demeaning. That's why I wrote that book. I didn't scold them. I, I, I'm trying to enlighten them. You know, you can't, anybody will, any tribe will fight to the death to defend their gods. You think you heard what I said? <laughs> and I'm telling you, the way I got it figured out, a lot of folks make it, made a God out of the devil. You try preaching against him in some circles, they'll get mad at you. They don't want you to destroy their God. That's being kind of mean, but that's the truth. I don't believe in the devil for believers. He's out there for unbelievers. He's out there. He's a mean devil, but he's not mean around me. No, no, no. Me, me and him have no communication. Uh-uh. Because he's scared of me. He knows who I am. Why do you think that demon screamed out when Jesus came up there near that tomb? Oh, don't torment us! That's, I think, the way they do when I get there. <laughs> Why not? Is that bragging? No! That's honoring the redemptive work of Jesus that, 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 that expunged me of my sins, purged me of all of my sins so that I stand in the presence of God with nothing left against me. Oh, what peace, what joy. Then I can be all that God wants me to be. See, I can be that because that's who, I, who Christ made me to be. Do you accept that? Is that too big for you? <clears throat> Say, I accept it. I accept it. Say, that's me. that's me. I like me like that. Like God made me. Like God made me. <laughs> Colossians 2, 12. Buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Same power in us that was in Jesus. He stood in the temple, raised his hand, and announced, and I tell you, I am sure his voice was different than those priests. <laughs> it shocked everybody. He stood up and said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And they said, we got to kill that guy. He believes that. We can't tolerate that. We read it. We don't believe it. He believes it. we got to kill him. He'll expose us. And they took him out the hill, tried to kill him, but they couldn't kill him. The time wasn't come yet. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I believe that. When I go before a crowd of people, I go conscious that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me to preach the gospel. And when I preach the gospel, I know the Holy Ghost is present to confirm the gospel that I preach before the gospel, because the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone that hears it and believes it. First John 4 and 4. You are of God, little children, and I've overcome all them devils. 
You don't have to fight about them, fuss about them, if he says you've already overcome them. It, it, it's a fake war. It, it's a fake, it's a pretense. It's trying to find something to do that seems holy. For heaven's sake, don't, 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 don't get off in the corner and fight with the devil. If you want to be holy, do something holy. Do something for Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Am I being too rough? I don't want to be too rough. Bishop, am I getting you in trouble? Oh, okay, I, I don't want to do that. I'm just a guest here. You're of God, little children. You've overcome the world. You've overcome them. Them. <laughs> Poor devils. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Of course. Of course. 1 John 5, 11. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life. This life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life he or she, and he or she that has not the Son of God has not life. God's revelation of God in the flesh. Jesus came to show us God in the flesh. Daisy asked me one time, said, Honey, what, what did Jesus come for? I puckered all up to give her a good pontifical answer like we husbands do. You know, we teach our wives everything. They're dummies, and we explain everything. We say, honey, that is a cow. It has some black hair and some white hair, but it will give milk, and from the milk you make butter. We explain, and the wife sat there, oh, yes, darling. Oh, I'm glad you told me that. Acts like she, she, she plays it cool. She acts like she didn't know that. <laughs> she asked me, says, honey, says, why did... Why did why did Jesus come? And I was all puckered up to tell her. Yeah, I, I know everything, you know, when my wife asks. And I saw a twinkle in her eye, and I knew I better shut up. <laughs> I knew she had something, something going. I said, you better tell me. And she said, well, he came to show us God. Well, I said, that's what I was going to tell you. <laughs> she said, but that's not all. I said, oh. But we thought, theologians, that, that, that's all there is to it. He came to show us God. And we quit there. I said, something else? She said, yes, he came to show us us. Yes. Yes. That was dynamite. That was dynamite. That is an unveiling. I'd never heard anyone say that. That was an unveiling. Jesus came to show me, me. See, he was the only one who was born without sin. The bloodline, sinless, born of a virgin. Not the seed, not human seed, but a miracle of God. The Holy Ghost moved upon a virgin, and a seed of God was created in her womb. And she gave birth to a child that became a man. His bloodline was divine. But I got two or three minutes left. Let, let me just add this to it. His bloodline was divine, but he had to discover himself in the scriptures just like we do. He did that. He was a student of scriptures, a rabbi. Little rabbi boys were drilled and drilled until a real mature rabbi, it was incumbent upon him to be able to recite by heart all the books of Moses all of the prophets and all of the psalms. He knew the scriptures. He said his opposers one day, you say you believe in me? No. He said, you say you believe in God and in his word. Search the scriptures. They testify of me. 
and you won't come to me and listen to me. See, he knew himself in the scriptures. Therefore, he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, and the same devil came, the same Satan came, who came in the garden to deceive them in the beginning. Satan said, we can't let God reproduce himself. See, he breathed into the clay, it became a living soul. The Hebrew scriptures Im imply that, that he imparted himself into them. They were like him in his image, in his likeness. But there was one deal that God made with them. Look now, we're going to have a great life together. This planet is yours. I've made it for you. It's going to be beautiful. Let's work together, dream together, talk together. Just one thing, I will always trust you, and I want you to always trust me. Finish. That's it. What's changed? Nothing. That's God's plan for us today. We can trust Him. He wants to trust us. I want to be trustworthy. I want to be about my Father's business. I want to find in the book, lo, it's written of me, I'm come to do thy will. He can trust me. You see that? And that's the way it is. So today, Jesus came to show us what we can be like. He found himself in the scriptures, so when he was led out into the wilderness, the same devil came to him, and three times, just three times, he came, and each time with a certain temptation and twisting of facts. Three times he tempted Jesus. Three times Jesus surprised him. He didn't do like Adam and Eve had done. Said, oh, I see. Okay, we'll try the nice fruit. It looks pretty. You say it'll make us wise. All right. No. Every time the devil came, three times, Jesus said, wait a minute. You've forgotten. It is written thus and so. Bang. The devil shut up. Come back another way. Try it again. I haven't got time to go into the, that's a beautiful study. But to try again. Jesus said, wait a minute, you've forgotten something. It is written thus and so. Oh. Comes back. Try what are we gonna do? I don't know if he goes back to hell to have another convention or not and say, what are we gonna do with this guy? We, 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 we made it all right with Adam and Eve, but this guy's giving us trouble. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. That's all supposition. Anyhow, came again. Try it again. Jesus said, hold it. You've forgotten. It is written in the scriptures. Thus and so. Bang. The devil leaves him. And angels come and minister to him. That's just like me. Just exactly. I've got angels all the time, but devils, they're far from me. Amen. Far from me. Amen. Jesus had to be tested the same as Adam and Eve were tested, and had he not believed the scriptures, it would have been the same calamity for humankind. Even though he was born of God, he had to be subjected to the same test that Adam and Eve and you and I are subjected to. But Jesus showed us the way and answered with thus it is written that ended the discussion. The devil's quit talking to me a long time ago. I know so much of the word, he doesn't have a chance. So he leaves me alone and I minister in peace, hallelujah, and deliver people from him all over the world. He hates me and I'm so complicated. And he has conventions every time I go somewhere and says, what are we going to do? They said, stop him, stop him. They say, we try everything we can. We can't, we can't, we can't. You better do something. We can't. I'm sorry, your majesty. We can't stop him. We can't stop him. He knows too much. You can be like that. 
You don't have to know all of that. Say, well, I'm not the great T.L. Osborne that's been everywhere and knows all that. But no, 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 no. Uh, three scriptures will do. <laughs> Can you memorize three scriptures? He's not very tough. Three times all he could take it. Yeah. <laughs> Poor devil. Poor devil. Hallelujah. I'm not a believer in the magnificence of the devil. I'm a believer in the magnificence of Jesus. I am inspired. Miracle life. Are you hearing me? What makes Christianity more than a religion? Jesus alive in me. That's more than a religion. No religion on earth has that. Christianity is the only form of worship. I hate to call it a religion. I don't like to call it a religion because I don't have religion, don't believe in religion, don't want any. Don't want any. I think religion is a ritual, it's a formality, it's a ceremony. I have a life. Don't call that a religion. Well, okay, if you want to call it religion, okay, I'll go along with that. We'll say it like this. It, Christianity is the only form of worship in the world in which the object worshiped dwells in the heart of the worshiper. Hallelujah. Only one. Only one. Only one. Muslims don't even claim it. Hindus never heard of the idea. Shintoists know nothing about it. Animus, fetish worshipers know nothing but fear of the gods that they call to. But we Christians walk with God in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. That's the inspiration that I draw from seeing the model of Jesus Christ until the day he was taken up. It all inspires me. Right through his death, and, and preachers, go home and analyze it. If you want to learn how to preach on Jesus, go home and figure everything that makes you happy about Jesus and how he did it. And right on through to his, his criminal case, his, his, his case, and then his accusation, and then his death, and then his burial, and then his resurrection, and then coming back and meeting with the disciples and preach all that, preach all that. That's inspiration. That'll keep you a happy preacher. If you want to go off and preach some of these silly little side doctrines that people get carried away with and try to see how holy you, get, how holy you can get, oh, I got to say one more thing. You know, people come, <laughs> people and preachers, preachers as bad as people. <coughs> Excuse me, Bishop. <laughs> No, uh, I'll excuse you if I can. I think you're not guilty. <laughs> yeah. Preachers and people, they have conventions, they have holy meetings, they have camp meetings, they have what kind of meetings? We have conferences, we have uh, annual meetings, we have festivals, we have everything you can shake a stick at, all these kind of meetings. And usually the idea is I want to go and be blessed. I want to go be holier. I want to go get closer to God. I want to go get a touch. I want to go for a word. Oh, I love those words. You fold up and stick in your pocket. I've got a whole book of them to beat them others ten to one. <laughs> a word. A move. Talk about the move of God. God don't move. <laughs> the only way he can move is when you move. Get off of your two hips and move. Then God can move. Are you with me? We go to meetings to get closer, to get a touch. And you know what I call it? It's all spiritual narcissism. We're coming together to see how holy we can be. If we can get a bless, give a better word. Look at me. I'm holy. See, I talk in tongues. See, I give a message. See, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's all haywire on the idea. The idea of coming together is to feast at the feet of Jesus and to learn from him and be inspired 
with the whole drive to go out them doors, as you said a while ago, and exalt them and lift them to Jesus. That's our ministry. Yes, sir. We are to continue what Jesus began. Yes. And he didn't go to any convention needing a touch <laughs> or a word. He had the touch. He had the word. That don't make us proud. That don't demean people. But, but, but folks, we got to grow up sometime and be what God made us to be. We are the healers of a hurting world. Yes. His power is alive in us. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Stand on your feet. It'll be better tonight. I skipped most of it. I just got to page three. <clears throat> Put up one hand. Close your eyes. Think about the cross. Think about Jesus dying, taking our sins so that we don't have to, so that we're saved. Think about him settling with the devil then coming back from the dead, seated at the right hand of God, and then coming back in the form of the Holy Spirit and dwelling in us. Say, I believe. I, believe. I, receive. I receive. I accept it. Thank you for the truth of the gospel. Thank you for the truth. I'm alive in this generation. I am your associate, Lord. I am your interpreter. Work through me. Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus bought me, and he made me a priest and king, and to keep my feet from 